All right, folks, today what we're going to do is take a look at programming the Yaesu FTX-1. This is the field version. With the new programming software that was released about a month ago from RT Systems, there's a couple of things that you need to know, so we're going to go over that. Uh, as far as I know, as of today, Yaesu has not released the official programming software. Now, typically I wouldn't buy programming software for an HF radio, but this does two meters and 70 centimeters. And I do want to put repeaters in there. And then also I plan on traveling at some point in my life and taking this with me. And I might want to quickly be able to add or remove repeater content from the radio. So I decided to buy the software. Software is $35 if you get it with a USB cable. Here I am using a very, very cheap USB-C cable from Amazon. I mean, cheap, like $5 cheap. And it works fine. So if you have a cable, try that first. If it doesn't work, get yourself a cheap cable. Not recommended buying the cable from RT Systems, even though I am sure it is an awesome quality cable. Okay, if you go to rtsystemink.com, you'll be able to search for your particular radio uh, by going to the manufacturer and then going to the model. I just went to Yesu and I picked the FTX one. Really simple. So here's the listing for the product that, uh, that I bought, and it's the YPS FTX-1 programming software. Now, I did not get the RT-65 cable, um, as I mentioned, and that took $10 off the price. So I was able to get this for $25. And then you get an email with a download link. You download it, type in your key or your uh, purchase code, and you're good to go. Now, what you need to do is you need to go to the Yaesu website and you need to make sure that you are on the latest version of the firmware for the FTX-1. Also, I needed to download the FTX-1 series USB virtual COM port driver for Windows 10 and Windows 11. I'm not going to go through the setup of that. It was pretty straightforward and pretty easy, but it's something that I had to do. Once I did that, it installed the Silicon Labs drivers on my computer. And what you need to do is you need to choose the Silicon Labs dual CP2105 USB to UART bridge enhanced COM port. Make sure you pick the enhanced COM port because when I picked the other one, 13, it did not work. So for me, it's COM14. It is likely different on your computer. Okay, when I installed the software, I got an icon on my desktop called the FTX-1 Programmer. I double-clicked on it, and this is what I got. So a couple of things I want to do is I want to come over into Communications, an upper left-hand tab. I'm going to hit Com Port Setup, and it's already set to 14 for me because I used this before. But I'm just going to go ahead and pick that, I'm going to hit OK. And I should be connected right now. And what I'm going to do is go to Communications again, and then I'm going to pick Get Data from the Radio. And right here it says, insert the USB cable, the USB-C jack, turn the radio on, make sure the baud rate matches that of the radio. And I believe I had this set for 38,400. 38, and I'm just going to hit OK. And right now it's reading the data. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull some data back from the radio. I already programmed the radio, so there is going to be data or information in here. And then you can see I've got a bunch of different entries in my memory channels. Um, receive frequency, transmit, frequency offset, frequency direction. Here in frequency direction, you have ARS, which is the system default value that's set up in your radio, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, or you can pick simplex, minus, plus, or split. And you pick those depending upon what you want to do. And then here you can pick different operating modes. There's the name right there of your uh, memory channel, tone mode. So you have options here. You have none, tone, TL, squelch, and DCS, CTS codes, DCS. Now, when you're scanning, you can come over here and you can click this skip, and that means it will not come up in scanning. And then you have M group, and this allows you to group your channels by band. There's some other information on here. We're not going to go through all of this stuff, but you can set it up if you want. So let me go over to settings. I'm going to go to radio menu settings. And again, I probably would do all of these settings through the radio interface. I don't think I would use a software for that. But here you have a bunch of different stuff. This is the display settings. And then you can go into here into CW settings, set those. Some operational settings. Down here are some TX general where you can set your max and minimum wattage. Um, I wouldn't mess with that unless you know what you're doing because you could potentially mix something up. Over here under radio settings, you have single sideband, FM, data, RIDI, and there are different settings in here. 
So here's what I was going to talk about. Like you can have repeater shift settings if you're using that ARS. So you can see right here, it's set for 100 kilohertz for repeater shift settings on 28 megahertz. Uh, six meters, you have 500 uh, kilohertz. Repeater shift for 144, two meters is 60 megahertz, 0.6 megahertz or 600 kilohertz. And then repeater shift for 440 is set to five megahertz. And then you can come down here, and as I mentioned, you can change that to something else if you want. I would not do that. Anything that is outside the standard uh, shift settings, I would handle over in the table like I showed you earlier. And over here you have external setting files. And this is if you have settings that were sent to you by your buddy or something like that and you wanted to use them. Here you can do your APRS settings. And then here you can set up certain presets for certain things. This has presets one through through five. I don't know if there's more than that or not. I'm going to hit no because I'm not going to make any of those changes. So another thing that you can do is that you can come over here. You know what? Let's just do this. And what I just did is delete all the channels because we're going to write new stuff to the radio. Um, one of the things I can do is I can go file. I can come over here to external data and I can get frequency lists. And let's say I want to put in GMRS frequencies for whatever reason. And I'm going to start those at channel one. I just hit apply. And then there are all my GMRS channels. Now there's different things here that you can put in here. You can pick specific GMRS channels. Uh, you can pick the weather channels if you want. Let's, let's just go ahead and add the weather channels, and we're going to start those at 31. So now I have all my weather channels added in here as well. I'm going to close out of here. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on File, and then I'm going to go to External Data, and I'm going to do a repeater book search. When this comes up, there's a couple of things you can do. You can do country, state, or county search, or you can do an area search. You can pick a particular location. Let's just say I was going to do Tempe, Arizona. Let's see if it picks that up. And we're going to do a 20 mile radius. And now I've got a separate tab up here that pulled all of those. Now what I can do is I can sort these by frequency. I can sort them by name. I can do whatever it is that I want. And here I got a bunch of stuff like echo link numbers and but what I need to do is I need to highlight this. So I'm going to come down here and pick Select All. And then I'm going to right-click and I'm going to pick Copy. And then I'm going to go over to my file here. I'm going to highlight this row. And I'm going to pick Paste. Control-V is what I hit. And it just put all those in here. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Communications. And I'm going to say Send Data to Radio. And here we go. It is writing all the data to the radio. Okay, now it's telling me to turn the radio off and then back on to complete the process. I'm just going to hit OK. And I think I forgot to show you preferences. And so let's go back in and do that. Uh, you can mark columns that you want to hide in this data table. You can come over here to memory defaults. Um, offset frequency defaults. So you can set those here if you want. Um, we showed you the other way to set them, but you could set them here. I think this is the font on the radio. Maybe it's in the application. I'm not going to mess with it because I like the font. And then I can do separate things, separate files for menu settings or keep them all in a single file, which is what I do. Um, open a new file when needed for Get Radio from Data and use different windows for each radio programmer. I'm just leaving the defaults. All right, so it said to turn this thing off. So we just did that. Now it said to turn this thing back on, so we're going to turn it back on. And we're going to see what we get. Okay, you can see right here we are in VFO mode. If I hit this button, now I'm in memory mode, and we are on the first one. Let me see if I can zoom in. You can see the channel number 001. You can see the channel name GMRS01, and then you can see the frequency. Now, if I want to change these, what I do is I press and hold that button, and then I get a table here that I can scroll down. I've got my home frequency, and I have all these GMRS ones, but I can come all the way down here. Oop, I went too far. So, for example, here's one, uh, channel number 76. Let's just go ahead and pick that one. 
Now we change to channel number 76. Okay, I put this thing on this tripod, so make it a little bit easier for me because I connected a dummy load to the back of the radio because we are going to key up. So when I key up, you can see the offset channel took. I should say offset frequency, not offset channel. But there we are. It's relatively simple, and I just wanted to go over it real quick and show you that there are options for programming your radio, and this will make it especially easy for putting in repeater information. Anyhow, that's it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching.